Do you feel down, blue, melancholy, depressed? Have you looked at your habits to identify what might be causing it? Well, I have a suggestion for you right after this. Thanks for joining me on More to the Story. I'm Lucas Kitchen. Subscribe on the platform where you're enjoying this fantastic show. Or go to freegrace.in and subscribe to get a daily or a weekly email update schedule. Okay, let's talk about your mood. What is your mood like? Do you notice, notice higher levels of, I don't know, irritability, sadness, annoyance, and the like? Well, here's a phrase that I want you to remember. Too much news means too much negativity. If you listen to the news or social media, the world is just falling apart, right? Or, or maybe, maybe not. I mean, who knows, really? Maybe, maybe we're on the brink of disaster. Or maybe things are just fine. I mean, it's harder than ever to say one way or the other. One thing is for sure, at least to me, news outlets and social media are producing division. News is divisive. Why is that though? Why aren't they just informing us? Why are they creating division? Well, if we learned anything from Ron Burgundy, it was this, news is a competitive sport. That's right, the news outlets that you watch, read, listen to, they are competing with other news outlets, at least in the United States. Now, in some other countries, news is funded in different ways, but in the United States, it's a competitive sport and it is all out war. This means it can win or lose. That's right, your news outlet is either a winner or a loser. A news station or social media site is considered a success or a failure, not by its truthfulness, but by its ratings. Now think about that for a second. It's not a win to be truthful for a news outlet. It's a win to have high ratings, to have more eyeballs, to have more readers or viewers. A media entity is a success as long as it has your eyes glued to the screen. It turns out that the truth can be quite bland, actually. It alone doesn't usually sell ads and retain viewers. No news station could exist without a little truth, but that's not really the main product, right? I mean, what keeps you engaged is a few truth kernels wrapped in a tortilla of urgency and dipped in a jalapeno sauce of blistering commentary. Now, you've got a spicy new burrito, and who can resist a burrito? <laughs> okay, I got a little carried away with the analogy, but, but here's my point. What keeps eyeballs on the screen is controversy, division, strife, and even bitterness. So, if you're experiencing a negative effect in your mood, the first thing I would suggest looking to is how much news are you consuming, both on social media and in traditional news formats. You see, the media has to produce stories that are divisive by nature. If they don't, they can't stay competitive. I recently saw a study that talked about how clickbait works best when it talks about the outgroup, the opponents, those to which the outlet that's speaking is against. That works the best. And so they become divisive to stay competitive. All the news outlets agree that the media is divisive. I mean, sort of. They agree. They agree that the news is divisive, but they blame the other news stations for the problem. You think about Fox News, for instance. They blame those crazies at CNN. I think about CNN. They blame those crazies at Fox News. They blame each other. No matter where you are on the political spectrum, virtually every news outlet is blaming another for the problem. Now, there probably are outliers and fringe, uh, fringe news outlets that don't do that. 
But my experience is most do that because it's a competitive sport. The fact that they are blaming each other shows that the media is, by nature, divisive. Now, with that in mind, take a look at what Paul has to say about those that cause division. He says, with a divisive person, uh, I'm sorry, he says, warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. Titus 3.10. Now, this only applies if you're a believer, if you're a Christian. But it's not a bad idea, even if you don't believe in Jesus. Avoid divisive people. Now, in the verse, it tells us to warn them. I don't know how you would warn your TV or your social media. Maybe you would send messages through the algorithm that is feeding you that negative news. If you're on a social media platform, what you can do is you can hide those stories that have a divisive, fear-mongering nature. And your algorithm will, over time, begin to learn what you don't want to see. And so that's a way of warning your algorithm to not show you divisive material. Now, if it keeps doing it, I suppose what you would do to apply this verse is to just stop looking at that news outlet and find another. I'm not saying you shouldn't be informed and look at the news, but you want to avoid news that causes divisiveness because it has a huge negative effect on your mood and your spiritual well-being. Now, would allowing a divisive person to give a nightly speech in your living room violate this verse? You be the judge. Of course it would, though. Now, here's a question you could ask yourself when you watch the news or click on posts and, that appear in your social media scroll. Does this help me love people or does it encourage me to be bitter toward people? So, if you think about the fact that you wouldn't allow someone to come give a divisive negative speech in your living room or maybe in your bedroom where you're, you know, normally look at your phone. The same is true of the news. If the news that you look at in your living room or on your phone in your bedroom before you go to bed is negative, it's giving you a 30 minute speech of negativity and divisiveness in the same way that you'd kick somebody out of your house for doing that. You ought to kick the news out of your life that does that because it causes a negative effect on your mood and your spiritual well-being. So let me repeat that phrase once more that you can say to yourself, does this help me love people or does it encourage me to be bitter toward people? So if you watch a news outlet that is encouraging you to be bitter toward the opposition, then maybe it's time to get that out of your life. I mean, this show is a show that is from a Christian perspective. And the Christian perspective is that we pray for our enemies. We bless those who curse us. We don't spend all of our energy trying to be bitter against them. So if the media shows you stories that cause divisiveness, then you should have nothing to do with them according to this Titus verse. If the things you read, watch, and listen to give you an excuse to be bitter towards someone else, even someone you've never met, it's probably time to turn off the screen. People complain that certain media outlets lean a certain way. I don't think the problem is that the news is too left or right leaning. If news leans any way but up, it's dragging you down. Here's what we need to do. We need to set our minds on things above. So don't forget to subscribe at freegrace.in or subscribe on the platform on which you're enjoying this episode. By the way, we just launched a new video and podcast series called Free Grace Bible Study. You can check that out by going to freegrace.in or you can find it on the aggregator where you listen to your podcasts. We're on all of the normal uh, normal distributors. 
Also, you should check out The Art of Grace with Sean Lazar. I'm going to have him in the studio today, and we're going to record some shows together. So you can be watching for those. But also, you can look for his podcast on those same podcast platforms. If you've got young kids, we also have a podcast for you and your kids called Free Grace Kids. It's hilarious. My uh, my wife produces it, and it's a lot of fun. I think your kids will love it, so check that out. You can find all that and more at freegrace.in. Thanks for being with me on this episode of More to the Story. I look forward to being back with you soon. Thank you.